So one of the things we want to do here to continue to try to get traffic and views and, and followers and such is we need to continue uh, to fully set up our, our, our account. Right now we've got a very basic account. And there's a couple of ways to do this. If you're looking at, if you're still on the account screen, which is the one with the little person there, you'll see a button that says Edit Appearance. So you see on the right side, I've got three posts, but I want to edit the appearance. So I click on Edit Appearance. And this is what my blog post looks like to the world. It says untitled, even though I wrote the name of a site, and it's got this generic color and this little avatar. So that's got to get changed. Uh, if I wanted to change the name of my site right now, the username, which again, they don't make it obvious when you're setting this up. Remember, it wanted to give me, I don't know, pretty glitterqueen.tumblr.com or something, right? So that's the name that appears right there. If I want a different name, the username, um, so I, can, I can edit that, or I can make more accounts. So there's a bunch of settings here that we'll take a look at. Um, the first, um, let me come back to the editing appearance because that can be uh, pretty in-depth, but let's say we're going to scroll down username, there's a pencil on the right, if I want a new name I can change that pretty easily, if it's already taken I can't use that name, we'll look at edit theme in a moment, replies, allow replies from people you follow, allow replies from people who have been following you for more than two weeks. So if you have followed another blog, that other blog has the ability to comment on your content if you turn that on. Right now, both of these are off, so right now people won't be able to comment on your posts. Well, I do want regular people to comment, like potential customers and such. I might not have followed everyone, but I want people to be able to comment. You've got this safeguard here in the second one that, yes, let anyone comment, but they have to have followed me for at least two weeks, because this, in theory, is supposed to help prevent the people that uh, might be spammers or might write negative things, if they follow you just to give you a negative comment, well, they have to wait two weeks. So there's like a cooling off period. So that may or may not be helpful. Uh, if you do want people to comment on your content, I would turn that on. We've got ask. Let people ask questions. So if you say yes, It's not so obvious again, but now what happened here is I'm going to have a brand new address, victorsbakery.tumblr.com slash ask. So whatever your account is, at the end we have slash ask. And this is where questions can be answered. They need, at the moment, a Tumblr account to answer the question, or you can say, hello, anonymous questions. So anyone that doesn't have a Tumblr account then could ask this question. So watch this. Try this on your, on your web browser. Open a new window or, or a new tab and go to victorsbakeryuniverse.tumblr.com slash ask. victorsbakeryuniverse.tumblr.com slash ask. I activated the ask ability on my blog, and so now you should be able to go there, and it'll say, what's your favorite recipe? Uh, I can't fully do it on mine because I haven't verified my address, but if you verified your address, there should be a box there where you can answer that question. So that's simply by turning on that button that says, let people ask a question.
Related to that, on the settings, we have also let people submit posts. If I turn that on, then it says, OK, send your audience to slash submit, which is your website slash submit. And here I can add some text, send your fave recipes, submission guidelines, only original recipes, please, whatever I want there, optional tags, let people add text or photos or quotes, but let's say uh, no quotes and no links. I want the text, the photo, or the video. So now if you visit my address, victorsbakeryuniverse.tumblr.com slash submit, and if you verified your account, you will be able to submit. And that's automatically going to get published to my Tumblr account. Next is the queue. Automatically publish a queued post x times between these times. So as I start adding content to my queue, it will automatically publish for me. But here it says two times a day. So if I say the minimum, look at that, it goes all the way up to 50 times a day. So I'm going to say once a day. So once a day, any time of the day, right? Midnight to midnight. But I'm going to say, well, between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. Once a day. So when I'm when I'm uh, when I'm writing something, when I'm writing a new blog post, and instead of post now, if instead I put that to add to queue, it'll put it in the in the waiting line in the queue. And then when I add another one and another one and another one, they all get added to this queue. They'll get staggered. They'll automatically be posted in random times between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. every day, including weekends. So on the one hand, this is very cool because it takes the burden off of you of putting a lot of content yourself being chained to the computer. On the other hand, it's not as fine-tuned as it could be because this includes weekends. Maybe I don't want to include weekends. Maybe I only want to publish things in my queue Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I can't do that. This is once per day between this time. I could be pretty targeted and say between 1 p.m. and 2 p.m., so a, nor a narrower window. When it's 12 a.m. to 12 a.m., midnight to midnight, it can be any time, 7 a.m. today, 2 p.m. tomorrow, 4.35 the next day in the morning, etc. It's an easy way to keep your blog active and consistent. I don't know about consistent, but it definitely active. And again, with any of this blog content or social media content, the more you do it, the better. We saw that article, that infographic earlier today where it said, blogs that post something every day get 87% return on investment. Ones that post once a month get 57%, which is still very good. And so here's a way to put something every day. You feed into your queue, and it will post once a day between these times. Well, I've got to run my business, and now I've got to blog, and I've got to manage my Facebook and my Twitter. Well, if you connect them right here, and you post something to Tumblr, it will automatically go to Facebook, it will automatically go to Twitter. So that's one less thing to, to worry about. You can also have post by email. Maybe you 
you don't have a chance to log into the website, but you can send an email. Well, send an email to your particular address there. Uh, mine, is, mine is different than yours, of course, but that's my unique address. Anyone can send anything there. That's another way to get submissions. Instead of someone going to the submit screen, maybe you share that email address and, and then you send out an email blast to people. Hey, everyone, share your, share your cookie success stories. Reply to this email and they can send it. That, of course, could be abused. If that email address gets put out in a public place like I'm doing right now, everyone that ever watches my video here now sees my address, but I can uh, reset it and uh, make that address secure again. That's a unique one now. And you can attach text, photos, mp3s, videos, or email. I can see the potential of this, but I, I hardly use it. and I hardly know people that use the email because there's an app for it. There's a Tumblr app. You can get it on Android, iPhone, Windows Phone, etc. There's a Tumblr app, so it's oftentimes much easier to post to my blogs via the app because it has more features. This is just a dumb email. You send an email, you attach a photo, and that's it. If you use the app, you can do the bold and the highlights and the headings and the animated GIFs and all that cool stuff. And of course, the main website. Whoops, my time zone is wrong. I'm not on the East Coast. So therefore, my times are off. If I told it between 1 and 2 p.m., actually that would then be between 4 and uh, 5 p.m. So change your time zone. Would you like your blog to be found by people throughout the world? Most likely, yes. So leave this on. Show this blog on the web. Allow the blog to appear in search results? Yes. Let people find it. Is your blog adult-oriented? I won't judge. But turn it on if you need to. If you need to block people, you have that control. So it's sort of also in a, in a way like a social network, but more like Facebook, in that you can control your message. Unlike Twitter, where if, if your hashtag run, gets away from you and people abuse it, well, you can't do anything about it. But here, you can block accounts that are being consistently negative on your blog and they can be consolidated here. And let's say eventually, well, you're tired of all of this, I'm, I'll stick to WordPress. You can deactivate the account. So any questions on any of these settings so far? All right, so regarding settings, the last thing that we'll do is, well, let's edit this theme. Right now, it looks like the generic theme, which is not going to get me very many readers and traffic and followers because I, haven't, I, I look like a, a spam site. I haven't optimized the page. So under Website Theme, you can click Edit Theme. It looks like I have to verify my email in order to have full access to that, so I might not be able to show you. Yeah, I won't be able to show you edit theme, but I can do this at least if you back up and you go to edit appearance. Here's where you'll be able to edit a few basic things of your appearance also, such as instead of the site being untitled, Victor's Bakery. That's the confusing thing. I never understood well, we, we called it Victor's Bakery previously, but then it's called Untitled here. So make sure you fix that. You don't want an untitled site. You have the ability to change some colors. Font a little bit. Maybe not even show that if you don't want. Bold. There's a spot for a description, which I would use, because again, when people search, everything that you add to your Tumblr could be found. 
So I want to write here family owned bakery in the heart of East Lake, California. And there is a limit, but uh, eventually you've got a big essay right there that no one's really going to read. So you have some visual customization ability. <clears throat> you should also add your logo, this little avatar icon, as soon as you can. No, you're not going to right click. You're going to click on the text and then it should show you this pop up and where you can choose your font. When you make any changes to the appearance, you want to remember to click Save.
so that's some of the basic things you also want to do uh, to create your profile to entice people to follow you. I don't have the generic icons anymore. I've taken a little time to craft my message. I've got my logo, some picture, text, and the font, and the color, and such. That's going to show that my, my, my blog is not just the basic Tumblr one that everyone gets. I can further edit the theme, but I won't be able to until I confirm my email, and that'll give me much more ability, like really if I know a little bit of HTML or CSS, I can edit the page that way too. I can edit its code. I can uh, change my theme. Right now I've got the generic Tumblr theme, but we saw that we, we were looking at, uh, for example, tmagazine.tumblr.com. Now that I have an account, Now that I have an account and I and I browse someone's blog, depending on depending on their blog, you might have the option on the top right. You see, I've logged in, I've got my own Tumblr blog, and I've gone back to Rolling Stone, and at the top right I see install theme. I can get the theme that other Tumblr accounts are using and activate it for my own Tumblr. So I can use the theme that I liked on Rolling Stone, or what are the other ones? Awesome people hanging out. It depends. See, this one doesn't have install theme. This one's not shareable, but what about Entertainment Weekly? That one doesn't have it either. But Rolling Stone did. So if I like this theme, I can click install, and now my my uh, my site will have the same sort of theme. I can't do it because I haven't verified my email, but that's how you would do that. Let's say you browse anyone else's. Let's say I look cookie, look for cookies, and I found an account that's that looks nice. And if they give me the ability, I'll have the install theme option. Okay, let's move on. Uh, you definitely want to customize your, your, your Tumblr blog so that it's unique. We'll look at a couple more settings. Uh, here where I'm still editing my account, at the top right I have account. So if I click there I will see, for example, my email, password if I need to change that. This is something that I have not looked into, but there's something called dial-a-post you can call in an audio post from your phone. If you set that up, you'll be able to call your blog and leave an audio message. Dashboard.
remember at the top right, under that little notifications lightning bolt, that activity, if you don't want to see that, you can turn that off under the dashboard settings. For most of these settings here, I would say just leave them as is. They're pretty useful. If you don't like the endless scrolling, however, you can turn that off. And now when you get to the end of the page, you'll see next page, previous page. The default is that it's on, and so it'll just go on and on. Notifications. It says all notifications and all emails email me about trending topics, interesting blogs, and whatever. I'm not quite sure I like that. That seems way too nebulous. So I would recommend go to your notifications setting here, and if you don't want to get a lot of emails about whatever, then you can turn that off. And also it's sending all notifications. If you turn on that pencil, it says, okay, email me when I get new followers, yes. When I get replies, yes. When I get new asks and such, maybe not. So you should go in and set your notifications so that you're not getting inundated with a bunch of emails. I already get enough stuff on my inbox. I don't need every notification about Tumblr. I'll log into Tumblr to see them, thank you. Or I'll use the app to see them. I don't need more emails. Do you see on the right side that it says notifications, top right? No, I don't see it. You can click on your account icon on the top right, uh -huh. and then settings, and then notifications. Thank You won't really see anything in apps at the moment, but this is where if you did download the app for your device, it would show you here. And let's say you lost your, your phone, you can come to this screen and detach it so that no one logs into your um, so that no one logs into your account. And the last thing you'll see here, which is really small, but if you look in the corner, so you've got account, dashboard, etc., and then in the corner, create a new blog. So I've created one account, and I have one blog. With the same account, I can create multiple blogs. So I can have like this umbrella account that has multiple blogs. So I can create a blog all about my baking company and create a blog all about my web design company and create a blog all about my cat. So I can create as many blogs as I want based on the same login that I set up earlier today. That might be useful because people then ask me, well, I have all of these, all of this content that I'd like to share, but it's not quite related. Should I share it on one, one blog? And usually the answer is no. You should have a blog per topic. It's going to dilute your message if you've got a bunch of different topics on your blog. So if I've got blog posts that I want to write about my cat, and blog posts about the movies, and blog posts about my book reviews, all three of those don't quite relate, so I could easily create a new blog for each one. Victor's movie reviews .com. Victor's book reviews .movie .com. Victor's cat blog .com. And then post to each of them the appropriate content. Yes, then I have three blog posts to worry about, but you can decide if it's worth it for you or not. So we've taken some time to add a few blog posts to to set the settings for our 
uh, for our account so that it's not empty and the next part is starting to post and also interacting give a like click the reblog and share someone else's post to your own blog when you click that reblog button it will automatically have a link back to the original blog post so you're not stealing anything you're still giving credit to the originator and so I want that eventually I want to post a lot of great stuff and I want people to have no fear about sharing my content because Tumblr will automatically leave a link back to you as the originator that could drive traffic back to your blog so I'm sharing this from someone else and adding my own caption notice it here it'll say reblog it's taking someone else's content and sharing it through your own account and that's perfectly fine it's on tumblr so that's the nature of it unless it was a private blog then it would be deactivated I can then instead click on the little triangle and say add to queue so I'm gonna to start to feed my queue I'm gonna to start to find a bunch of content to reblog to add to my queue so that I can have something in my queue so that my blog is not empty. So this is a viable thing to do on, on Tumblr. Uh, go through and search or see other people's content and click on that reblog and add it to your, to your queue. The point of that is that you're putting out content to your followers, keeping them happy. And then also, Sweet Tooth Girl has gotten a notification that says, Victor's Bakery Universe reblogged your post. This is the larger tactic in social media where I have a Twitter account I'm trying to build followers I have a Facebook account I'm trying to get followers I have whatever account I'm trying to get followers one thing to do is to interact to be social on the social networks like someone's comment uh, someone's post reply to it reblog it etc because they get a notification and if they see then who's Victor's bakery if you hover your mouse over any any account you or if you click on it you'll get a preview of what the account is and if I've set up my account and had it edited it these posts and such someone might say okay that's really interesting let me follow and there's readers there's an audience is there a place uh, on that view that you're to share the content that you have Yes. After you've started your queue, you can click on your, your account icon, click on the little person, click on that, and then you'll see a brand new entry at the bottom, which is queue. I've got three items in my queue. So you can click on that and uh, fine-tune your queue. So I've got this one. Notice you've got the ability to move it to the top. So if you if something was going to be published at a later point, you can move it to be the first one. The, the top most one will be the next one to be published. And let's say I don't want it to the top. I want this one to be published first and then this one. So I can click and drag from this and say make this one down here and then the other one on top. 
you also have, well, post it now. I don't want it to wait. I want to post it right now, so you can do that. And further, I guess, a few more options, edit or delete, so don't even take it out of my queue. So those are my different queue options. Uh, no, post is to post it right now, and this little gear is to edit it. Mm -hmm. To reorganize it. And here's another quick spot for you to edit the, the queue right there. So one time a day, 1 to 5 p.m., put something every day consistently. And uh, here again is the example that they're both blog platforms, WordPress versus Tumblr. Tumblr is, is much more short attention spans. It's much more multimedia. It's more immediate. It's sort of like a social network in that you you consume it and you go on. What's next? What's new? WordPress could be more thoughtful, longer content, longer form, but it also has aspects to some degree of social media. You can share your WordPress blogs to Twitter. You can have people comment and like to them, and you can have people follow you, follow your blog. But it is a bit more of a longer crafted posts and such. They can both serve ultimately your goal, which is Victor's Bakery, I'm, I want to sell cupcakes. I sell them either on Main Street, where my shop is, or I sell them on my website where it says buy now. So via Tumblr, via WordPress, I'm creating content, I'm creating followers and buzz, and I'm getting traffic to my website where I actually sell the product. I'm creating a presence online. I'm being found by Google and Yahoo and Bing. I'm, I'm becoming well, more well-known. This is an aspect of search engine optimization, getting found, putting content out online. Next week is a brand new class. Today we're done with the blogging class, but next week we would have a new class on SEO. I expect a lot of people to show up because people always want to learn that. So if you do come back next week, I would sh show up a bit early because I'm probably going to have a line of people wanting to enroll, and it's a new class, so first come, first serve. Come back next week if you want to learn about SEO, and we'll see how some of those topics that we talked about in this class of blogging will be reiterated to some degree in that class because it's all related. I'll talk also about social media in that other class, and other things that we can't get to here or other classes. But often most of my classes interlock with each other. They're actually in the process of being put into a larger sort of cohesive narrative of classes. But um, if you took this class to learn how to blog, hopefully then you got a lot of great ideas and hands-on concrete things to do. If you've never heard of Tumblr before, maybe it's something you want to explore. Maybe you say, forget it, I've got plenty to do on WordPress. Great. You can go back to the settings over here and delete your, delete your Tumblr and, and go on with your WordPress. That's fine. But I give you, I give you a look at both of these big pro, uh, blog platforms because um, they're both very useful. I didn't touch on Blogger and LiveJournal and those other ones that also exist because um, I really think these are the two big ones, WordPress and Tumblr. And Blogger was one of the earlier ones. It's still around. You can still get a Blogger account. Don't bother. Use WordPress and or Tumblr and social media. What will we be, what will we be discussing next week? Well, it's a brand new class with a brand new syllabus and a whole bunch of topics. So uh, next week will be uh, the long tail keywords research on setting up what are the keywords for our site and how to get found and and uh, an activity and handouts and all of that. Say that again? They're both built WordPress and Tumblr. They are. They're both um, pretty valuable but 
there's only so many hours in the day and I'm only one person so I might decide to stick with Tumblr. Maybe after today I want, I'm curious about it and want to learn more and use it more. Or I'm going to stick with WordPress or maybe I can do both. As a matter of fact, uh, when, when we looked at our Tumblr, uh, at our WordPress account, I believe there was a setting somewhere in WordPress so that when we publish something on WordPress it can go automatically to Tumblr also, saving me even more time. So it's a setting in WordPress. Um, link your WordPress to your Tumblr. So any general questions on anything we've talked about to Tumblr today? Okay, so we're going to end the main lecture at this point where we've uh, covered Tumblr. This could also have a longer, uh, one more day of, of, of work perhaps, but really it's, it's time for you to use it. It's time for you to explore it yourself, and there's nuances still. But back on my link, my, my document I mean, um, I have um, Tumblr tips. Remember we skipped that one, you should check that out. We've also got Mashable, a brief guide to Tumblr's new tools and interface. You should check that out. I put those links together there for you for your further reading, and I recommend you look at them. So that's the end of our uh, four-week uh, blogging for SEO. Hopefully you uh, got a lot of good use out of it. And uh, question? Um, I just thought about it right now. The SEO, when it comes to Tumblr, do you find that the other... The other way, the WordPress is a little bit better for that compared to the Tumblr. No, I think they're both viable. Um, they're both viable ways of improving your SEO to your main site. It's really about traffic and content. So if you're posting content that your followers are are reacting to, that they are liking and commenting, and better yet, clicking the link, then it, then it's great. Either one will work. There's really no one better than the other. People can be very viable to improve their SEO through Instagram. They can spend all of their efforts to really become a pro on Instagram and that will help you get traffic to your site. So it's just anything you want to target your endeavors to. So we'll wrap up at this point. We'll do a little lab time. Thank you for coming and uh, hopefully see you in a future class.